Our guest today is actually a dear friend of mine for the better part of a decade. He moved here from Denmark and became a pop sensation, to say the least. <laughs> the one and only Czesław Mozel. Yeah. Hello and hi Ryan, thanks for inviting me. I don't know if that was actually a good way to introduce you because I know you don't think of yourself as a pop sensation. Yeah, but maybe not anymore, but you could all you can always be like, uh, you, could, you, you could always be ironic and, uh, and be mean and say, yeah, he didn't make it in Denmark. He just had a musical education. And then he came to Poland where everybody that is actually outside of Poland can make a big career in television <laughs> exactly. or something like this, you know. But is there such thing as making it in Denmark? Uh, it's such a small country. I don't know. I never thought about it. Uh, I just know that um, I always dreamed about I dreamt about trying to live in Poland because I, I, I was born in 79 and my parents moved to Denmark. The plan was going to Canada. My, my father, uh, Ukrainian, wanted it so much, so badly, but uh, we, we stayed in Denmark and therefore Poland was like my second home co country, but I wanted to try Poland. I wanted to, to taste Poland more than just being here like four or five days touring or visiting family. Tell me, when you first came to Poland as an adult, because I imagine you were probably here from time to time as a kid visiting mm -hmm. relatives, what were your very first impressions of the country? It sounds maybe crazy, but for me it was it was freaky and fantastic that everybody in Poland actually spoke Polish. I spoke Polish at home, uh, but still it was not enough for me. I mean, when, when I was growing up, I, I was a teenager. Later on, I was 18, 19 years old, and okay, it was okay that my my Polish friends um, uh, spoke Polish, but it's like always saying that you don't actually choose your Polish friends yeah. when you are outside of Poland. Sometimes you, after 10 years, wonder, why are we actually friends? Uh, okay, because we speak Polish. Why are my parents friends with these people? They are so different ah, because they speak Polish. So when I, uh, when I was like 18 years, 19 years old, and I could come to Poland and see that every woman here is she speaking Polish? My my my, uh, my friends from from Tesco Value, uh, uh, two Swedish girls, Linda and Magdalena, they said you are flirting with every Polish girl in Poland, and I didn't know that. But they said you are you are like flirting with every Polish girl, uh, and maybe they thought I was flirting. I was just so. It, it sounds stupid, and, and 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 but but I was just amazed that every. Polish woman spoke the same language as my mother. It always, um, the question provoked me a little bit. Why did you come back to Poland or why do you like Poland? And I was like, why not? You cannot be bored here, you know? Yeah. It's lost, with all respect, I've just been to Norway. I like Norway, but maybe because I lived in Poland now for 10 years, I mean, I don't like when you, after six hours looking at the Norwegian fjords and it's so beautiful, it's all time beautiful, and I just want to destroy a little bit. I just want to put a, a post up here or maybe just try to go 65, not 60 on the roads, but you cannot. And when I was in Norway for one week, I never missed Poland that much as being in Norway one week. Would you say that you love Poland in part for its imperfections? Yeah, I mean, I would like to learn Polish people to to admit that sometimes they are wrong or maybe to admit that I'm not good enough yeah. and it's okay not to be good enough all the time. You make some pretty outrageous statements sometimes, both uh, privately, in your art, in interviews especially, and I'm curious how much of a pull you feel living here and making those statements. So. For example, some, at, at times I might have some outrageous observation, but I wouldn't be particularly brave enough to say it as a person who's immigrated to this country. I know you have Polish heritage, I think you were, you were born mm -hmm. inside of these borders, mm -hmm. but you came back as an immigrant. Do you ever feel out of place or do people ever not accept what you say because you're from abroad? Yeah, I think there's a little bit this and that. I mean, for some Polish people, I will never be Polish because I cannot speak fluently Polish. But uh, one thing is for sure, I never felt the Danish. Mm. 
Maybe I had a problem with who am I? If I don't feel Danish, but am I Polish? When I was a teenager, when when I grew up, I just I just knew that okay, I'm I'm a born Polish boy, an Im immigrant that is raised in Denmark. I love Denmark, but uh, but I always felt Polish, even though I didn't know what being Polish means, and I still like. I still feel that I'm discovering my home country. I try to understand my home country, but one thing is for sure, um, when you are raised in Poland, you have this, I can see it on some of my friends, they are like, they have this burden, they're like almost carrying this, this, this cross like Jesus, you know, with everything that Poland experienced, experienced before, and I must understand it. You told me that when you were living in Denmark, you had some confusion about your identity. Are mm. you Danish? Are you Ukrainian? Are you Polish? What about today? What are you today? Yeah, today I, I really feel like a European. Mm -hmm. I feel like a European. Uh, I'm lucky. That's the, I'm lucky to live not only in Poland but in Europe. Yeah. We must remember that. I mean, if you say to some Polish people, "You're lucky you live in Europe." Yeah, but okay, but we are not so rich as Germany. Or yeah, but remember, in these days. We are on the other side of the world. It's like Hunger Games, District 7 or 9, what you call it. So we are lucky. And I feel like in European, I, I feel that the, I, I love to watch Denmark and Poland play, but I don't like um, when it's a square. When, I, yeah, yeah. when, when it, it's a tie. When it's a tie. Because I cannot use a tie to anything. I like when Poland wins, then I sending SMS to my Danish friends, when Denmark wins, I like to send SMS to my Polish friends, but I... So you're happy no matter who scores a goal? Of course, because I'm always on the winning side. <laughs> I mean, with all respect, I'm a multiculti, but the word in Poland, multiculti, it sounds so, so dark, so Muslim, but, but come on, we are, we are multiculti, you know, we are, we, we, uh, Europe is changing, Poland is changing, I mean, so many Ukrainians come to Poland. Mm. It's amazing. We need the work. We need their uh, abilities. We like that Ukrainians are coming here. But how would you feel when, because it will happen that in five, 10, 15 years, some of the Ukrainians that came here, they opened up a company, get a big success, and suddenly your, your neighbor is Ukrainian, but he has a much bigger car than you. How would you feel that? I really think that we often look at our own bellies and, oh my God, my neighbor has a bigger car and he has no education. He must be a criminal. I must say that, that I, I, I love Poland, but sometimes I don't know why. It just, it just uh, uh, there's something romantic about it. There's something, uh, and, and I also like, like it that we kind of are a little bit uh, unpredictable or mm -hmm. we are so, I mean, we have these complexes. It's the Texas of Europe, I suppose. Kind, kind, yeah, yeah, it's the wild west of Europe. And, and, and maybe we thought we are much more European, and maybe when it comes to all, we are much more Russians than we thought we are. See, but that's the thing that amazes me about you in the context of Poland. I mean, you came here out of nowhere. You became a humongous celebrity. I mean, back when you were on X Factor, I remember this time. Like, I, when I first met you, you were a musician. Some people knew who you were. Yeah. Right? And I remember clearly the moment you went to X Factor, we couldn't even sit outside at a cafe without a hundred people mobbing around you, but you never stopped making statements that crossed your mind. You, you never seemed to filter yourself or protect yourself as a result, and it's, I it's filter myself you into some trouble. No, I, I filter myself a lot, and I, I don't want to offend any, anyone, but, but one thing is for sure, my, my psychological like profile is is so that if I would have the power, if I became a politician, I would never do that, but if I became a politician with some influences, then I would do that everybody should think the same way as I think. We have to accept that in Poland, it's okay to have a different kind of view, different opinion, but we have to listen to each other. What are your favorite two cities in Poland? I, I love Warsaw, and I never thought I would love that Warsaw. But I must say, Warsaw for working and planning your life, and then I think Krakow for partying. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I mean, it's funny to think if it comes to Warsaw, I really had to learn to love it. And to a degree, I have you to thank for that because early on, motivated. I remember I, I, mean, I told you, come to Warsaw. <laughs> you did. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. I mean, Krakow is great and I love it. But yeah, you clearly told me that I would yeah. probably have yeah. no future in this country if I didn't move to Warsaw. What turned out to be true. All right, I've asked you this before privately. I think many times, actually. What language do you think in? I think more and more in, uh, in Polish. <laughs> but, but, but I never thought about it. I, I think Polish, Polish, but, but, but sometimes it's a big mixture of everything. Are, are there any other statements that you would like to make about being an immigrant or your experience? Something that maybe I neglected to mm, No, but it's, I just want to... About your music or... I just want to say one thing is that I, my English is not that good. Uh, do you know what, uh, if you have to... I've seen two times, you know, you, you get... My band is on, on tour and we have like, you know, Polish menu and we want an English menu. Mm. And you, you know what Danias drop you? Mm -hmm. You know Danias yeah, drop yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Do you know how it... Uh, if you want it on English, do you know what it sounds? Denmark from chicken. I've seen it two times, Denmark from chicken. It's like, you know, Dania, Denmark. Yeah, it's cool, Denmark from chicken. So that's amazing. That's why I love Poland. It's perfect. I love Poland as well. Thank you so much for Thank being you, with us today. Um, I'm giving two cards in this video. The first one is a link to my favorite Czesław Śpiewa song. And the second one is a link to a record that Czesław was kind enough to play on with me back when I had my band, Let Me Introduce You to the End. And uh, it's kind of a special occasion because uh, we've been running Cult America here for uh, a while now and most people don't actually know that my foundation is from the Polish world of music. So having you on today was a very special occasion. Thanks, Ryan. Hit the subscribe button.